issue or items that need to be prioritized or aren't getting prioritized. So I, I prefer to leave it where it is. The other solution would be to have the motion fail and then modify and bring it back. Yeah, I do, if I may, I just have one more question. And this is again for, um, I guess, for the Director of Development Services. I think this is what I asked before, but I'm not 100% if I heard the answer. So, um, what is described there includes completing construction of a deck, etc. cetera. Um, and I guess the question that I was trying to ask, and I don't know if I asked it properly, does it, the, the completion of the construction of that deck need to be in the way that's laid out in um, the plans? Or can it, I mean, can he make adjustments with the building inspector as he goes to make something that is suitable, that is safe, that is, you know, all of the things that we want it to be, uh, but maybe not up to the standards that were originally planned? Meets code. That meets code, thank you. Thank you, Worship. Um, no, he could definitely work with the building inspector to revise the plans and do a different approach, but but I guess the important thing is the word deck, right? So it would need to be more than just an entry, I guess. It would need to need to be a deck with guardrails. But yeah, I mean there there's ways to revise it, but but as I mentioned, if you're if you're thinking in terms of just an entryway, then you may want to change the motion. But yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks. thanks. Yeah. But that answers my question. Thank you. I've kind of taken that like because I'm going to be pouring this concrete. I've already got footings there for this deck, three foot by three foot pads, and then I just got to put the sauna dudes on and uh, rebar sticking up. I'd rather stay with the plan and just, but it, you know, like I said, I think an extra month on that would, that would probably be adequate, and I could definitely get you know have the money to do that. And I can do the proper use the proper materials for it, and it's done, and it's. Doesn't have to be done again or repeated. Or so, because we already went over this about doing temporary things, Dave does it. You know, it's probably right. It's just gonna be temporary too long then. So the but I just don't want to promise anything that you know. If I don't have the money to do it, then we'll tell many days. So. Well, at some point we have to move as well. We can. We have a remedial action here that we want this property taken care of and, right. this, and this stuff being done and uh, we're going to put some dates to it and uh, I think once I get this back code it's going to you know it's going to look night and day compared to you know right now it's got leaves and stuff going in I'll get rid of the forms off there I'll have those sawn tubes in the back they'll be for it there's the because it slopes down to them and I got the materials I put materials in there so no one would fall in there, sort of type of thing. But once that's all over there, then it's backfilled. And then, you know, kind of, I'll, have, I'll still have egress with the other deck for sure. Councilor Mattis. I was going to say uh, the other option, I guess, would be as it's up on the screen is that replacing the words within 30 days in paragraph 3A1, and we can add the words and 3A2 of the resolution with the words within 60 days. It's no, it's 60 I'm sorry, it's 60 and 90, you're right. So, so as the mover of the motion, then I'm, I'm willing to reconsider and make that amendment to the motion for 3A2 to be changed from 60 to 90 days. If that'll help Mr. Fabian get the higher like job. It's a whole new section. Sure, thanks. I don't, um, thank you for doing that. I don't think I get to second that because I didn't second the motion. But I think the idea here is to get the job, to get the works done that need to get done, um, to bring things up to building code for health and safety, for untidy and sightly, um, but to ideally set Mr. Babiuk up for success so that he is able to complete what we've set out for him to do. And so if he, this is the last thing on his list, if he agrees that he um, should be able to get it done in 90 days instead of 60, then I, I'm in favor of that completely. Uh, it still keeps everything within the original 90 days that we had laid out for him. 
uh, obviously starting the clock from today. And since we've gone through these together and come up with the timelines that are agreeable to all, ideally it gets done. And as the seconder of the motion, I will accept the change from 60 to 90 days on 3A2. So we have an amended motion. I don't need to read the motion out again. Um, so I think we've, we're have we sort of halfway, giving you some well, extension of time. I thought it was already at 90, and I was trying for like four months. No, it, it was at 60, and you just said that 90 days would work, and I think we're at a point where I think we're ready to vote on okay, the motion. Well, can I just say, I mean, if I get to that stage, you'll have other town meetings. If, if I say, okay, I can't financially do it right now, I might have to come back, or, or work something through and do... Like he was saying, maybe do something smaller or something. I would in, I would encourage you to maintain your good relationship with our yeah. building uh, official sure. and our director of development services and uh, get on this and show some progress. And uh, I think everybody wants you to, to be successful here and we need to get this completed. Yeah, I appreciate your help. And it's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. I'll call the question. All in favor? Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the next item is adoption of prior minutes, adoption of June 8th, 2020 regular open council meeting minutes. Uh, can I get a mover to adopt those minutes as circulated? Second by Councilor Schwarzenberger. Any further discussion? Call the question. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Committee reports. Number one, June 11, 2020, Downtown Advisory Committee meeting minutes for receipt. I'll move receipt. Receipt. CEO. CEO. There's also an endorsement of a resolution there right. um, with regards to um, DRC 07-2020, which is that the Downtown Advisory Committee recommends to Council to endorse the Grow All of Our Action Plan and that the Downtown Advisory Committee further recommend to Council to initiate discussions with South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce to hire a 0.15 coordinator and that funds from the Grow Oliver project uh, be used towards seating the coordinator position and that the Downtown Advisory Committee and Oliver staff be directed to investigate additional sources of funding for the position. Your Worship. Councilor Schwarzberg. If I may, um, then I'm gonna rescind my motion uh, I wasn't aware that we had to do that, and since we haven't seen the Grow All of Our Action Plan in its final um, final uh, writing yet, all we've seen is a draft at this point. I don't think we should be doing this until we have actually endorsed that plan after seeing the, uh, the final version of it. CEO. Thank you, Your Worship. The final version is on the agenda for adoption. Okay, and let's there was move no, this back. <laughs> <laughs> there was no um, changes to it from what you saw uh, at the at the final draft. Councilor Grace. I was just going to say the same thing. Mm. Okay. Sure. Councilor Matt. Um, in this resolution that refers to hiring a 0.15 coordinator and that the funds from the project was there leftover funds? Could we get a little bit more background as to, because I know that won't be in the Grow All report. Um, there are some funds left over to, to start seeding the position, yes. Some funds meaning? I have to, I know, I do, do believe we were provided that information. I'll check with the Director of Development Services. He's just checking on that. And is it just that amount that we're budgeting? Like 
what are we budgeting for this point one five? I, I, for myself, I need more information before I can make the decision. Is it? Are we matching funds? Is there? Will there be sufficient funds left over? Where's the money coming from in order to generate this point one five? And what does point one five mean? Is that one hour a week, two hours a week? What are we talking here? I guess what I'm asking for overall is more information from staff before I'm prepared to proceed on this. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Worship. So I think the recommendation as it's written though is going to get us that more information because it's to initiate discussions um, with to to work towards a coordinator position. So I mean that would have to come back to us before anybody was hired. It's just to get the ball rolling. I was going to say the same thing. I feel like, if my memory serves me right, we had a similar motion come forward from the Crime Prevention Committee at some point, and it was recommending, you know, the bylaw position and a bunch of different things. And um, I guess my, I have, if I have a question, it's about process. Us adopting the minutes, including this um, recommendation from the committee, simply means that we then go on to have a discussion about them. It doesn't mean that we all of a sudden have a point one five coordinator. So the resolution that we're all we're doing is saying whatever money we have left, we identify that as money that could go to a to a point five one coordinator and additional funding will need to be followed. That would be a point one five, not five one. Point one five. <laughs> Yeah, um, I do see an email from Mr. Ingram that um, talks to uh, the Grow Well of our coordinator in other communities and um, Merritt and Gibson have supported uh, a position to the amount of $5,000 is, is what they've put uh, towards that. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much uh, funding is left how much funds are left in the project um, at this current time. But that's the, the dollar amount that we'd probably be looking at for a point one five. Council Mattis. Thank you, Your Worship. <coughs> for me, I still believe that we can get more information on this before we make, there's no panic to make this decision. We can certainly um, receive the minutes. We can certainly read the motion that was moved and seconded by the Downtown Advisory Committee meeting. And now we can get more information from staff and we can come back in two weeks. <coughs> and then we can proceed from there with, with the proper information. I, I don't think that there's enough information in the motion from the committee to give us the background that the council required. Like, we don't know how much money there is. We've heard that maybe it's going to cost $5,000. I'm not clear on where the money's coming from or anything else. I'd, I'd like staff to prepare a more comprehensive report before I'm willing to. So at this point, I guess I'm saying I won't support this particular motion or, or this or other than receiving the minutes until we get a proper report. Come, come spend some minutes you got your hand up. No. Uh, just uh, Councillor Grice the first. Thank you, Richard. So I think the last meeting that we had when uh, Equal Plan presented the rollover plan to us, that's where the argument was made that to move this plan forward, we should look towards getting a coordinator. So I think the argument's already been made there. It was suggested by Councillor Mattis that we wait and that that goes back to the Downtown Development Committee for adoption first and to be recommended back to us. So that's happened and if we keep going around and around in circles, we're never going to get to anything. So I think we need to at least get the conversation started and look towards hiring a coordinator right now. So I would move then um, that council direct staff to initiate the conversation with the Chamber of Commerce to hire a .15 coordinator and that the funds from the Grow Alder project be used towards seeding the coordinator position and that staff be directed to investigate additional sources for funding the position. Councilor Bentamilla. 
I just have a question on process, I think. So what we have in front of us are committee reports. So we have um, minutes for receipt, including the, the motion um, that was moved second and carried by the advisory committee, which includes that recommendation. So would we not, would the order not be to approve the minutes and recommendation from the advisory committee? And then perhaps make a secondary motion if needed? I see that staff has put that up there. So I would accept that as a friendly amendment to also receive the minutes and, to, and, and then to endorse the resolution. Okay, well I'll second that then. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. What it, 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 the, the resolution should be that the minutes, what's sitting there is that the minutes of the June 11th, 2020 Downtown Advisory Committee meeting be received and that Council endorse resolution DRC 07-2020, which is the resolution that you had read out earlier. Okay? So moved. Councilor Mattis. Thank you, Worship. I would ask that they be separated because I'm more than happy to receive the minutes and vote in favor of that, but I'm not in favor of the second half, so I would have to vote against the whole motion, which means not receiving the minutes, which is kind of foolish. My question is, uh, by voting for this motion, are we committing as a council to hire and fund a coordinator or just investigate? We're initiating discussion. We're not investigating. We're initiating discussion, um, which is fine, but I'm just, you know, what are, I'm just asking what are we committing to as a council? Are we committing to funding this position, hiring this position? Uh, or just, we're going to put, we're, we're committing to putting whatever's left in the grow all over plan toward the coordinator and looking for other funding. Are we still going to get? an opportunity to have this come back to council to vote on supporting the funding if it in fact is coming out of town hall or budget. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, what you're doing with this motion is you're endorsing uh, the Girl Oliver Action Plan, which does include um, which does include funding a Coordinator position. The coordinator position at a point one five is one of the first one of one of the actions of that action plan that has been presented and um, is before council for adoption. Just one second, council sorts murder. So, so we're saying we're we're going to fund it, or we're just supporting, but we don't know where we're going to fund it from. The resolution that sits here says that in the action plan, it indicates that there's going to be, th that we should hire a part-time coordinator, economic development coordinator, or grow all over coordinator um, to move forward all the other items that are within that plan. Uh, what we're saying here is to get that going to use seed funds from the leftover funds that we received through the rural dividend um, project, and to have the downtown advisory committee and all of our staff start investigating for additional sources of, for funding of the position. So yes, we would be funding it, but you would be asking staff and the, the committee to start looking for funding opportunities through community futures or that kind of a group to see if they could uh, provide funding for this 0.15 position. Councilor Schwarzenberger. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'm uncomfortable with that because I don't see how we can, if we don't know how much we're funding, we don't know if it, in, if we are funding it out of our tax base, that's a budget issue and we're not at budget time. So I, am uncomfortable um, accepting this if it means that we are going to hire a coordinator no matter what. 
whether it comes from taxation or it comes from additional sources, and those are that's a big difference that I would have. Thank you. Yeah, that's my concern as well. I don't mind. I don't. I don't have a problem putting the seed money toward it because um, that's something that we're we're willing to commit. It's it's with grant money that we got, so we have. I'm assuming grant money left over that we put toward the coordinator position. And that was my question. What, it, what happens if the downtown advisory committee, through their investigation, cannot find additional sources of funding? When, then what? Another coordinator. Council Rep. Miller? Well, uh, this, that's not the way that I read it. So what it says to me here, and maybe that's the issue that we're having is the wording isn't incredibly strong, but it says to initiate that they recommend to council to initiate discussions with the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce to hire a 0.15 coordinator that funds from the Grow Oliver project used towards be used towards seating the coordinator coordinator position and that the advisory committee and all of our staff be directed to investigate additional sources of funding. So the seed money is going to be used for the initial hire. If this becomes a budget issue for us where we need to fund or partially fund the position of a coordinator, then that would come to us in budget time like all of our other budget requests. Yeah, and that's what I was asking for clarification and I, I don't think I received that yet. So is that the way Council of Ed's being worded it is the CAO, is that correct? We're not committing any town of all of our taxation budget money toward this position by adopting this resolution. Other than the seed money. Other than staff time. What's that? Staff, staff time. time. Yeah. That's it. And yeah, again, I'm uncomfortable if it says to hire a 0.5 coordinator, so it would not seem um, like a good idea to me to, to hire somebody. There's no additional sources of funding, and then we go into budget talks in November and say, oh, we can't afford that person anymore. So all of a sudden, the coordinator who was hired uh, lasted four or five months and then it's over. So I think I think it's putting the cart before the horse unless there is additional source funding available that we can finance this for the first year uh, without without going into taxation. Council Mattis. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I still go back to I'd like to know what point one five is. How many hours a week, and who are, are we hiring the chamber to do this? Is this just a way of channeling those funds towards the chamber? I, I and I, I concur with Councillor Schwarzenberger when it says initiate discussions to hire someone. Then that means you're going to hire someone. Why else would you initiate discussions if you're not going to end up hiring someone? If you're not going to hire them, then don't start the process. Councillor Grace. Thank you, Your Worship. So, I mean, my intention with moving this motion was to get the conversation started. Because frankly, if we, and if we don't hire somebody, what are we gonna do with this plan? I mean, who's, which corner of whose desk is it going to sit on? If this is a plan that we want to adopt, which was, you know, we sent it to the Downtown Advisory Committee so it can come back for adoption. If we're going to adopt a plan, I mean, we've, gotta, we've gotta do something with it or nothing's gonna happen. It doesn't mean we adopt 100% of all of the elements of the plan. Well, then we need to because read. they come with a cost. I wasn't finished speaking, thank you. So if we're not going to adopt the plan, then we need to look, revisit it again. But we can't just let this go nowhere. I mean, if we're just gonna develop, 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 and never get through to implementation, then what was the point of starting the process in the first place? Councillor Schwarzenegger. Um, to Councillor Grice's point, I agree. However, I need to know how much it's gonna cost and where it fits in our budget for 2021. And how do we, how can we say, go ahead and start the hiring process if we haven't 
gotten the budget part yet. Councilor Redkvina. Thank you. Uh, I, I just, I'll just say again what I said before, that it's not, to me that's not what this says and we have, I'm sure we've dealt with this issue before and it was with a uh, recommendation from the Crime Prevention Committee uh, and it had to do with the bylaw officer, like there was a bunch of recommendations in there, the um, camera rebate program, like there were quite a few things and we adopted that motion as we received it from them and we didn't deal with any of those items until budget time. Um, and their recommendations were all that we do this, that we do that, that we do the other. So in my mind, this is the same. The only action item there is to initiate discuss discussions, as I said before, and to use funds uh, from leftover funds to seating the position. But nothing, there's no additional <coughs> funding attached and there wouldn't be unless it came to us at a budget time or at some other time. Councilor Madison. Um, following that same thought, then the end of this um, resolution or motion should state and that it be brought forward at budget time, because that's how we did it the last time. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Worship. I'd like to see it brought back to council prior to a hire being made with numbers. I don't know if we need to wait till budget time because perhaps the money that's left there from from the initial grow or funding for the uh, rural dividend fund will be enough to cover until budget time. Um, but I it, but I, I do agree, and that's how I intended it in the first place that the conversation be started and come back to council prior to a new position being added. So I don't know what needs to change in the wording there. Yeah, that was that was kind of my thinking on this this whole thing that we would we would adopt the plan and then something would come back to council with a recommendation to hire the coordinator, which is kind of what this is doing, well, but it's jump, I, sort of jumping the gun a bit. But it would come back to council with a recommendation to hire a coordinator with a scope of work attached to that coordinator position and a budget associated with that coordinator position, and some of it might be funded from from seed money left over or, or funded from the Grow All Over project if there's money left over from that. Maybe a recommendation to look for other funding or a recommendation for council to fund it on, on an end on the first for the first year. So is there a way that we can you know um, reword this or write it so that it that's what it says that you know maybe the downtown advisory committee uh, works with the South Okanagan Chamber of Commerce to, to scope out what a 1.15 coordinator position is and what it will do and how much it's gonna cost. CEO. Thank you, Worship. You can't really reword the resolution from a committee, but you can add on to, we just, oh, okay. and we're done. <laughs> So but if we were to leave it as it was written, endorse the resolution, and then add on as the CAO said, can you still see what you're typing, or is everything nope. okay? Nope, it's okay. To add on to it that um, the information be brought forward um, to council at a later date for um, proceeding for, with their decision on the 0.15 coordinator position. I mean, that aligns with what my intention with the motion was. It goes back to where I started at the beginning, which was a report from staff. Okay. From the information I've gotten, um, there is enough seed money left over in this particular uh, fund that we received uh, from the Grow Oliver project of two coordinator position for about two months, one or two months, um, they could uh, provide funding for that position. Yes. Yeah. So 
that council endorsed resolution DRC 07 and that staff be directed to um, bring forward additional information on the costs of a 0.15 coordinator position. Is that what you were wanting? And the, and the scope of the position or whatever, what is, what are they going to They're just going to follow the cost and scope. Order. That's the, the, the cost and scope. The scope would be the action plan. Right. It's, it's already the, there. That what's, right. the, what's that person going to do for a 0.15 in the money we're spending? What are we going to get? Point zero one five. Point zero. Mm -hmm. No, point one five. I know, but it's oh, Chris. Half an hour. Zero point five times. <laughs> <laughs> Take out the zero. Thank you. Does someone need to make that friendly amendment? I'll just make my own amendment to my motion. Sure. <laughs> I amend my motion. <laughs> it's been a bit of a strange. Actually, I did get a text while we were talking about that from Roy Wood saying that the video feed was We've not working. We fixed that now. Okay. Well, maybe. We've been um, working on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, just my only question was about the money that was left over. There's no, there's no uses. What, what would have happened with that uh, seat? That money was left over from the rollover plan. We would have given it back. We would give it back to the province. But we could use it for this as, as yes, well. as part okay. of the project. Perfect. Yeah, we don't like Any further discussion? I'll call the question then. No, we don't. I, I, I seconded it twice. Yes, yes. Just seconded it twice. Do it third. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. New new space. Okay. I'll call the question. Those in favor? Post motion carries. All right. Item two, June 18, 2020, advisory committee meeting minutes are for receipt. And we also have a resolution with this as well that the committee recommends to council that staff enter into negotiations with Velocity AP for the use of the Oliver Airport facilities for automotive testing. Anyone from the airport committee can just maybe provide some information? Uh, certainly, Your Worship, I can help fill this in here. Um, at the airport advisory committee, it came forward that Velocity AP, which is a company located down in Industrial Park, they do very expensive modifications to race cars all around the world. Cars get shipped in, shipped out, that sort of thing, and they also do a lot of work for cars up at the Area 27 racetrack. And what they are asking for is to use the airport for testing the vehicles, which will basically involve um, high-speed runs down the airport to test the computer systems that they have installed in, in, in the vehicles or the other performance modification that they have put in the, into the vehicles. And they were looking at, uh, I believe if I remember correctly, up to a four-hour window where they would put in a, uh, not necessarily a no-fly, but uh, there would be a notice that they would be using the airport. And I believe that they would also be in communication and able to clear the airport if an airplane needed to land. They were more than happy to pay rent. Um, and that's, we weren't sure what that would entail or what the amount would be. The flying members and the airport manager um, supported the, uh, the use of the airport in this fashion. So at that point, it was suggested that it be brought forward to council for a decision as to whether council wants to use this, use the airport in this fashion or not. And if council doesn't want to, then staff won't proceed any further other than a polite letter to the Velocity saying thanks, but no thanks. Or if they are, then they would proceed with uh, discussions and then come back to council to say, 
And much as any other lease, they will come back to council and say, well, Velocity AP would like to enter into basically a lease with the town for the use of the airport at various times at whatever price, and then council would choose to accept or not accept at that point. Thank you, Councilor Metz. Councilor Grace? Thank you, Risha. Um, I don't really have any opposition to this, especially if the airport committee is for it and they want to pay rent. But do you know if Area 27 was considered and why they choose the airport as opposed to a racetrack? I, you know, that question crossed my mind at the time and I meant to ask it. I didn't ask the question. It may have to do with the length of the airport in, in, in a straight line. That makes sense. Councilor Metz, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the question that I know that I'm Get asked, or we're going to get asked. Was did the issue of noise come up? Um, it did not at all. No, not in our discussions, and it's a fair question. But no, no one brought it up, no one thought to bring it up. It would be during the day, it's not an evening thing, but uh, yeah, it, and that may be part of the discussion that um, staff would. You know, maybe I, I, I don't know what the parameters of the discussion and, and what type of equipment they want to test or whether it's exhaust systems or just or what. But that's all to me part of it. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm hoping staff is taking notes. They're trying to get the computers working. I'm listening. Okay. No, she, I know she's listening in the background. I mean, she'll, certainly, it'll be considered in negotiations that uh, sound okay. levels will be important. Okay. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Rachel. You said it was one four hour window though? Well, it, it could be a, a one four hour window every week. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, yeah. And I'm not sure how our one hour window. I'm, I'm not exactly certain what. We didn't get a lot of clarity as to how how often and how long it would take. But I'm certain that staff will bring back a far more detailed report. Yes, we will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second, any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor? Proposed motion carries. Uh, item three, verbal report from Chairperson Swartzenberger on the Committee of the Whole meeting earlier today. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we had two items on the Committee of the Whole today. Uh, first one was metered, metered sewer rates. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion ensued on that topic. There was various technical questions that were answered by the Chief Financial Officer regarding costs, usage var variables, uh, formulas for uh, calculating s metered sewage, etc. And uh, the resolution at the end of our discussion was to refer back to staff for further information and impact on changing the way that uh, sewer rates are charged. The other item was uh, the process uh, for incorporation of a company by the town, such as a development corporation. A uh, report from the CAO uh, detailed the process for incorporation, and after some discussion, the resolution that was passed was that council defer to a future council meeting or strategic planning session to discuss incorporation of company process further. And that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Schwartzberger. Moving to water matters. Item one, water quality report for April 2020. Department of Operations. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. Uh, apologize, uh, the April water report's a little late. Um, we had some bugs in our SCADA system, so we wanted to ensure we had the right numbers, and so we're a little more confident now. Um, April is always a busy month for our water operators, um, in the rural area especially. So you could see the list in the report of different things that they were doing, um, and also the in-town operators. Um, the water numbers don't seem too too out of jive from the previous years. I think there were there was an increase in April for um, for domestic and for irrigation. Just pulling up 
Uh, temperature ranges were pretty much average, just a little bit above um, from, from historical stats and um, water, no water quality issues. And if you guys had any further questions for the April water report. I don't see any questions coming uh, in. Move, move, move for a seat. Move for a seat. Second. Second it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries. Okay, and moving on to the May reports. Um, it's not as populated with items, and the, and the, especially in the in-town water systems, but our, just so the council knows, um, our in-town operators generally after April spend most of their time on the sewer. That's why I want to really concentrate on sewer stuff. So you don't see the 80% of the work is probably sewer in town by me. And again, there was no outstanding uh, issues. Again, temperatures were roughly the same as historical. Um, and uh, the water usage and consumption and for domestic is actually a little bit down below the seven year average and for both domestic and irrigation. And if anybody had any questions on that. No questions, your worship, but just, uh, just one comment and that is more like actually for June. We're seeing probably a lot more rain, Sean. Do you think you anticipate that our pumps are not working? I'm just trying to save power. Oh, <laughs> so in June? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I mean, we, we've got a really wet June going. Yeah, I, 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 I think you're going to see the numbers go down. I haven't looked at the numbers, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're correct. Yeah, the numbers are going to be going down. And the, uh, the pipe in the the lake, no issues? Performing no, we have, we've had no issues with the, the fix that we did at Gallagher Lake. And yeah, we're, right now, we've actually, for that whole Gallagher site, and we've, we're qualifying contractors for that job right now. And then I'll, and then I'll go for an N, NFRP. And so if we, we'll take four contractors and decide from that point, uh, and we'll and give them another month to come up with, with some solid numbers. So as a sidebar. When can we anticipate uh, um, I'm just curious as to where we're going to make a decision as to... We're going to, it'll be brought to council for, uh, um, for awarding uh, early September. So it should be, we're hoping for the first uh, council meeting in September. That's what we're pushing for. That's what we're working with. That's fine. So we'll receive it the, uh, the May report. Thank you, Council Michelle. Move, second. Council Ventimiglia. Call the question, those in favor? Opposed, motion carries. Uh, anything to report, Council Michelle? Uh, just this afternoon, Your Worship, and other Zoom meetings, nothing to do with Council, but uh, seems like that's the new uh, way to have meetings. <laughs> Thank you, Council Michelle. Uh, moving back to business, item two, Sandy Dump recommendation of award. Uh, Director of Operations report is attached. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Um, if you had a chance to read the report, uh, I've also attached True's reports and recommendations. Um, they did verify numbers um, and pointed out that there was uh, there was a fix. Uh, the numbers weren't um, working out, and they had to correct the numbers. And Superior actually was higher than Mike Johnson by a dollar five cents. So I had never, never seen that, that close before. So, and they were contacted, um, our engineers contacted you know, Superior and just let them know just ahead of time that this is what happened. And, and when they crunched the numbers, they even had different people look at the numbers separately. So they were, they were good about it. Um, Anyway, so I'll just go through the reports. Uh, we had discussions, uh, last budget deliberations, I believe, and picked a location for a sandy station because 
Um, it has been brought up over the last few years, especially when we lost our Centennial Park RV trailer park, um, that we, the town of Mulder has no longer has a sanding station. So we've been working on designs of the sanding station and um, we picked a location with council's approval um, back in the fall. And so now it's been tendered. Um, there, there were some deletable items and it was on the, more on the electrical side. And so really we, we wanted to come back and ask council if, if there was an appetite to do the extra electrical work that was pointed out in the, in the tender, and I'll read some of those things. The deletable items in the tender, installation of owner supplied kiosk and block for the pedal assembly, that's $1,475. Supply and install 50 millimeter conduit miscellaneous materials, $7,680. Core hole booster station, that's where the power would be coming from, uh, $1,150. Install and supply service boxes, $1,250. And supply install type A street light an anchor bases. And these would just be put in place now and we can budget for those this fall and put them in next year if council decides to do that in a separate budget. But it, it would let it be easy now to put in the electrical, or in, sorry, put in the lab standard bases if there is some appetite for that. And the Sandy Star, um, which is the company, we were looking around at several different companies and Sandy Star was the one that we thought uh, worked the best. And it's a pay kiosk and equipment and you can actually set your fees, whatever you want them for. Um, and to enter into agreement with them, and get the kiosk, it's going to be the initial costs are around $4,000 Canadian. So they quoted us in US dollars, and of course, like everybody knows it's fluctuating. So, depending on the day you purchase. So, um, there is a charge, a monthly charge, for having this kiosk in place. But uh, staff feel that maybe having a kiosk and a pay system, um, we, we recommended $10 to start, but we could, we could lower that. Um, it, it maybe gives, it gives staff in our town of Oliver an idea how many people are actually using it too. Because I, I would like to see those numbers myself. And, uh, and you know, a free pay or a free sanity station, um, I, I feel that our staff may have to run out there a bit more, keep an eye on it a bit more. When you have a lockable cap, I mean, there, I know there's ways people can get around things, but uh, I think for the most part, most people are honest and, you know, when they're using the sanitation station, our staff would still be checking up on it, but um, it'd be nice to really know the numbers and then we can always adjust it down the road. If we're feeling we're taking too much money or not enough or, because there are some operational costs that'll come with the sanity station periodically. And we're gonna have to go and suck out the, the first manhole that we put in. Um, just there's things that always fall into a sanity station. There may be some additional flushing that we have to do or certain things that we have to do and a little bit of cleanup now and then. So staff feel, we were going, we agree with, um, True's recommendation. I'll read out the recommendations. Um, award the Airport Street Sandy Dump to Mike Johnson Excavating Limited for $99,233.40, which incorporates the extra electrical work and pay option, and increase the original budget of the project by $24,000. Twenty-four thousand $24,000. Uh, the second option would be award the Airport Street Sandy Dump to Mike Johnson Excavating Limited for $90,653 using the deletable items in the tender, which deletes extra electrical and pay option kiosk equipment, or not accept the bids and retender the project with provisions. And one last thing I wanted to mention, and it is noted in the reports, that 
we're looking, this is fully out of the, the sewer report or sewer budgets. And, and we're, we're noticing that we're probably gonna see upwards to about $80,000 on another sewer project that we're working on. So if we're looking for that additional $24,000, then we staff feel that we, we have that in the existing budget. So we're not really asking for more money. It'd just be switching from one fund to the other. And any more questions? Or any questions, sorry. Council Grace. Thank you, Worship. Uh, I have a few questions uh, through to the Director of Operations. Do you, has, have there been, has there been any forecasting of of projected use, like have you looked at what other communities, Summerland perhaps, or? I tried um, connecting with somebody in Summerland and I haven't heard back from them and I, I was going to make a call again today and I just sidetracked several times. Um, I don't have any numbers. I haven't looked after a sandy station before and the one that was at Centennial Park prior to that, um, I know that the the company that leased that property looked after it for the most part and just called us when they had problems. So we only went up there when we had to do something. Well, they probably had a lot of them just used for the <coughs> Well, they had a lot of people drop stuff into it and it had caused some issues. But. Um, my next question is, if the light anchors aren't put in, are there is there other lighting there? Is it going to be in the dark? No, it'd be in the dark. So it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did the airport have any comment on this? The airport, um, yeah, they did have a comment. Um, I talked to Paul DeMarie, and um, I believe we still need to touch base with the province just to make sure that that usage is okay. Um, I discussed with Paul um, about the fence will be moving in, will be taking about 10,000 square feet. Um, but it shouldn't impact any more hangers up there. Um, it shouldn't impact it that much. And we should be able to work around that in the future. Okay. And I guess my last, I guess, just comment maybe for the rest of the council is just, so the first 20 uses per month are gonna go towards carrying costs, plus we're looking at this additional $24,000 to make it a pay system. So I don't think we're looking for a return on income. I don't know if that's gonna be if that's going to be there. That's it, thank you. Councilor Benjamin. Thanks, I think the CAO had her hand up first. CAO. Um, thank you. With regards to the use, Diane was saying that yes, we should Canadian Tire, they were six deep for quite a while, uh, wanting to use the sanding up there at Canadian Tire yesterday. In Hedgington. In Hedgington. Yeah. Oh, I so why are we doing this? <laughs> <laughs> They're both six deep. <laughs> so I do have a couple of questions. Um, I think I know where we're talking about. Right in behind the Canadian Tire? Yes, Yeah. we, ha we have staked out the area. It's been staked out for a little while now um, where the fence will be moving to. And okay. it's just north of our booster station but behind that Canadian Tire building. Okay, so I have a couple of questions then. Uh, for some reason, I thought when we were talking about this originally, we were talking about down at Public Works. So, two questions. Um, number one, just hearing that number 10,000 square feet is what we're going to be moving, encroaching into the um, airport land. Will that affect at all the area used for forestry camps in the summer? Um. It shouldn't affect the forestry camps because our last discussions with forestry before they moved out of the area, I was with our CAO and we, I believe Paul was with us as well and we toured that, that big lot um, just north of the rodeo grounds that we just mowed down and don't do anything with it. We thought that that was a better location and then they're, especially for their ground crews, and then they're not impacting the airport as much. Okay. They're still going to have helicopters in certain areas and other, you know, planes and stuff. But um, most of the tenting and stuff, we, we think that we feel that that's a better location for that. And they didn't disagree with that either, did they? We just haven't come up with an agreement with them 
and service the law properly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then, uh, before hearing that, my original question that I had for you was: Does this um, affect, or is it affected at all by by the roadworks that are meant to take place back there as well? The roadworks. Um, Aren't we supposed to be resurfacing? Well, that was that's completed. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> don't take that road very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that that was completed. That one lane's all fixed now. It's it's a lot better now. Oh, yeah. okay, I'll have yeah. a look. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Councilor Schwarzenberg. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm I may be the the lone holdout here, but uh, I I was I was I would say lukewarm about this project two years ago when it was slated at seventy to seventy five thousand. I'm less enthusiastic at 90,000 and I'm really less enthusiastic at 100,000 plus 200 a month to service it. So I'm, I really, before we decide to go ahead with this, would like to get some idea of usage and we can't use the Soyuz because theirs is free. So somebody who charges like Summerland or uh, I'm sure there's other municipalities around that have them and charge for them. I'd really like to see what usage is before I can vote on this. Thank you. Councilor Um I, I would agree with that. I think that uh, since we've started talking about this a uh, couple of years back, I don't think we were ever really talking about it as something that would make money, uh, more just as a service to offer to our citizens. Uh, and I've heard it a lot in the community, and I continue to hear from people that um, want to send them and don't want to drive to cities for it. Uh, but when we're collecting information, if that's the way we're going to go, I think that it would actually be interesting to know close by communities whether or not they charge and obviously have them categorized as such, because it would be interesting to see are the ones that are not charging more heavily used, if they have the data, I guess, uh, versus the ones that charge. Um, because I'm sure in Penticton there are some that do and some that don't. Um, anyways, I would agree with that. Councilor Mattis. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. I'm glad that you're not asking for extra money to complete this. I'm sad that we're going to have less going into uh, reserves at the end of the year, but so be it. Um, on that basis, I will make the motion that Council of Ward Airport Street Sandy Dump to Mike Johnson Excavating Limited for an $99,233.40. pennies. I'll second that. Uh, my comments on this are, I, uh, again, I hear lots of people thinking a sandy dump is a good idea in town, and I also, I always thought of a, a sandy dump, and the reason I didn't support it down on Station Street was was I just didn't think that was a good location for it, but I also think, I mean, we, we don't even know what we're gonna do down there, but in behind the mall with Savon and the stores, Canadian Tire there, uh, Tim Hortons and the liquor stores, cannabis stores, insurance, all those places there, I think this is a great way for, you know, to increase traffic in those malls. People, it's an easy place for people to get in and out of, and, and I always thought of it as a way to bring business to town. Lots of people use them. I'm not sure about the ten dollars, but it does give uh, a way. I don't. I, I wouldn't agree with the ten dollars. I think less than that is probably appropriate. But it is a way for you to manage the sandy dump, as opposed to just leaving it open and having an honor system in there. And that's just kind of the cost of it. It is a service, uh, but it also brings business to town, and that's why I support it. I, I think it's a it's a great addition and. I would use it myself. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Worship. So, sorry, just to clarify, I thought we were looking at a $24,000 difference between the deletable items and non deletable items. We're looking at this again, we're looking at a $10,000 difference, is that correct? So, if we take away the pay option and some of the other. Sorry, yeah, I should have the total. It is, yeah, I should have. Had the total in there. Um, Councillor Mattis asked me this before. On on True's report, page two of four, it has a breakdown. So the actual total will come to 
if you add in the engineering and the contingency, Mike Johnson's portion of the contract is ninety nine thousand two hundred thirty three forty. But the total project, add in all the electrical and put in the electrical bases and everything for future street lights is one hundred nineteen thousand and eight dollars. So the motion as it is then is not for the full scope of the project, it's for the non-pay option? Option one would be for the full scope, and I just don't have the total in there, because I, I did mention for Mike Johnson, which incorporates the electrical work pay option increase, and increases the original budget of the project by $24,000. Our original budget was $95,000. It just never worded it properly. We could make that. So what, I'm still the numbers. I don't know what we're getting for $99,000. That's just Mike Johnson's portion of the work. There's still engineering. Okay. And there's still, um, there's still the, uh, okay. Mike, sorry, Mike Johnson's portion is, if we elect the, if we keep the deletable items in there, we'll come to 99,233. But then there's the Sandy Star kiosk, which I am in talks with that company. So it's an additional $4,000. And um, and I believe that it didn't include, and OSC doesn't include the engineering. So in total, the project would come to $119,000.08. So I apologize, I should have made that one here. So, just to hopefully help out uh, Councilor Bryce here, this is the Earthworks portion of the project, mm -hmm. um, which would be Mike Johnson's ex excavating, would be doing all of that. In addition to that, then we would be installing the, the, uh, the pay portion, okay? But if you look at the options, it, um, at the very start of the report, um, there were two options, one at 99,000, which incorporates elect extra electrical work and pay option, and then the other one was without the deletable items. So all those deletable items that you referred to are in the 99,000 that we're talking about. Plus so the, the extra, the extra, the extra, the extra street lighting, the pay system. Yeah, the pay system is totally separate. So if we're putting in all the electrical and there's an appetite to do the pay system, that's an edge. So it's in the total. So maybe we could, uh, okay. mm -hmm. to make it less confusing, would we split it up? See you. Thank See you, you. Marisha. Um, so what we're doing here is that um, we're awarding the Airport Street Sandy Dump excavation to Mike Johnson Excavating Limit for a cost of $99,233.40 for his work. and. What we're also going to be doing is work from, staff will be working with uh, getting the uh, kiosk put in with a company, another company. So we're asking for the Sandy Dump work per se to be to Mike Johnson. So you might wanna go with that and then possibly add mm -hmm. in and uh, a total cost Total cost for the project of one hundred nineteen thousand and eight dollars. And eight dollars. Does that help make Which, more sense? That sorry for me. That's what um, the uh, increase of twenty four thousand and eight dollars is referring to. It's just that we don't know the original budget, so then we don't know what the twenty four thousand eight dollars brings us yeah. to in the end. The original budget was ninety five thousand. So that probably, if that was put in there, then we'd know what we're talking about. Council Grace. Thank you, Worship. So in that case, I'm not um, ready to vote in favor of this motion because I would like to get that additional information from staff, so I will not be voting in favor. I just want to point out that it is in the report under the financial section that the original budget for this project was 95000 and if we award the full project as tendered, it'll increase this project's budget of $24,008, 
but we will see a cost savings of 80,000 from another project, which are, is our VFD and diffusers at our Talking Lake project. And so, and in actual, um, in actual fact that in our sewer budget, um, we still would be saving probably $55,000 this year. So sorry, that wasn't the additional information. It was more because I'm on well, the fence between whether or not I, I would want to pay system or not. So that's that's what I've been thinking. Oh, okay. so, I mean, I'm in favor of having the sanitizer. I think yeah. it would be a benefit to the town, but pay or not, I don't know. Councilor Bridge. Yeah, I'm ready to um, flip what I originally said and vote in favor. <laughs> and I just can describe why because it's always a little bit of annoying when somebody votes the opposite of what they said and doesn't explain why. Um, but just uh, what you said earlier, Mayor, it jogged my memory. So in addition to our earlier discussions being around a sandy dump being an amenity for um, citizens in our community, we also did have the conversation at some point in time about bringing business to town and bringing business to kind of wherever that happens to be. And that just reminded me of the fuller conversation and fuller scope. And yeah, in addition to saving 80000 in another budget, it kind of, you know, that things start to balance themselves out. Councilor Maddox. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, although I don't have a, a complete answer for Councilor Grice's question, I think that uh, um, if we look into it, we'll probably find out that maintaining a free, free one will be a lot more expensive than maintaining a for, for pay at the end of the day. I just think it'll be looked after better when people have to uh, actually pay for it. So. As with most things. Yeah, I mean, I, I, f I feel the pay option, whether, I mean, council can make a motion, we can start out at $5 or $10. I, I just think it's a good way to track it. And then we look at the numbers after a full year and see where we're at. Maybe we have another discussion, what we want to do you know, on that. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that you're going to make money off the sandy dump. No, no, I don't think so either. Either. It's about the other side of it, which is attracting people to come into Oliver, go to the mall, take advantage of maybe some of the businesses that are there while you're lined up using our sandy dump. Council Grace. Thank you, Your Worship. So maybe not making additional money, but do you think the pay option will at least pay for itself? I, I'm hoping the pay option at least pays for itself, but it's, it is a good way to track. If we don't have anything there then we never know what the numbers are and i think it'll cause more visits to for our operational staff council to me well i think just um has been said a couple of times i think just based on the tracking the pay option makes sense. i mean the pay up, i'm not somebody that would use a sandy dump so i don't actually know how many free there are versus payable but to me um Having the service is one thing, expecting it for free is another. So I, I don't see it as being a big deal if you have to pay $10, maybe I'm missing something. Uh, but the just the simple fact that we can use those numbers to track and we can do that for a year or two years or whatever we decide and you know make a decision down the road whether we keep it or leave it, we wouldn't have that information if we started off the other way. Councilor Schwarzenberg. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm gonna continue on my contrarian line here. I. I really question, I mean, I, I, I want to bring business to the town of Oliver too, and I know there has been talk, lots of people asking for a sandy dump, but they all live in town, and they're looking to use their own, uh, they go out camping in non-facility places, and then they come back and they need to dump their gray water and black water. Whereas the tourists that actually come here normally would stay in campgrounds that have full hookups and don't require a sandy dump. So I'm not, I still am, need to be convinced that uh, a sandy dump would be um, a driver for uh, tourism. And that's why, that's why along with the price tag that I'll be voting against this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Schwarzenberg. Any further discussion, Council? If not, then I'll call a question. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Director. 
Item three, development cost charges bylaw 1390 update, parks DCCs, director of development services. Thank you, worship. The purpose of this report is to provide an update to council on the park DCC calculations as part of the 2020 DCC bylaw update. At the May 11th Committee of the Whole Meeting, the 2020 DCC bylaw update was presented to Council, and Council provided a resolution which requested that Town Staff and True Engineering revisit the Park DCC calculation. Through this analysis, it was determined that the anticipated cost of purchasing the land and developing Tucklenew at Northwest Park is actually quite a bit higher than originally anticipated at $2.76 million versus $1.5 million. And I'll actually let Alyssa, because she, she's been waiting so patiently for the last two hours, I'll let her um, take it over and, and provide the update to Council. And with that, the staff recommendation is that, staff are recommending that updates to the Park DCCs be reviewed by Council, or be received by Council, and that Council directs staff to bring DCC Bylaw 1390 as amended back to Council for first reading at a future meeting. Alyssa, are you there? Uh, yep. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yep. Great. I'm going to just share my screen here so I can pull up that uh, memo so we can go through it together. Oh, it says host disabled participants can share. Sure, we'll just correct that for you. One second. Are you able to share your screen now? Uh, it's still saying disabled. But if you've got, um, you can just pull up that the memo that's in the um, you can share now. the meeting package, and you can just look through that. You can share your screen now. You should be able to now. You should you should be able to share your screen now, Alyssa. There we go. Sorry for the delay there. So, uh, following the council meeting on uh, May 11th, we, um, myself and Steve under with Chu, sat down with uh, town staff to review that cost estimate for the park. Originally, that cost estimate of 1.5 million was based on land acquisition and um, a small amount for essentially landscaping and park furniture, um, such as picnic tables and benches. Uh, following that meeting, we reviewed that cost estimate with town staff to, to determine if that 1.5 million uh, was going to be uh, an appropriate figure um, to base the DCCs off. So that's the first item here that I want to go through, which is our updated cost estimate. As Randy said, it was quite a large increase from 1.5 to 2.76 million. That increase is largely due to the addition of public washrooms and uh, parking lot and pathways. Essentially, this is a fairly large park. The uh, town staff want to ensure that uh, this budget is suitable to account for those items that would be deemed as necessary to suit the development that's planned for the next 10 years. Following update to that uh, cost estimate, the other item that council asked us to um, reflect on was the portion of the project that would be considered recoverable by DCCs. So in the original draft, we had uh, stated that 100% of that 1.5 million would be uh, attributed to DCCs. However, in further review of this, we've dialed that back to 49%. Uh, uh, and that is essentially, uh, in the next 10 years, based on population growth, 
the town would require 1.8 acres of additional park space. The proposed park is 3.7 acres. So that means that only 49% um, would be recoverable by this instance. So while we've seen a significant increase in the overall cost estimate um, for this park, the recoverable portion has gone down um, by about half and the proposed DCCs for parks now are actually quite comparable to where they were before. Uh, based on the feedback we received from developers, this seemed to be quite a reasonable, um, a reasonable amount for the parks DCCs. An additional item that council asked us to reflect on was if there are any additional park spaces through town that um, staff would consider as eligible for DCCs. Primarily, um, that was concerning linear parks. We did have that discussion and no additional um, park sites were identified um, for this next 10 years that would be considered development driven. And because this one park site meets the quota of how much park space would be considered required, um, we've just left it as, as the one project. I think I've touched on all of our main points there, Randy, unless there's anything else. You're good. Councilor Mattis. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, one of the main questions I had at the beginning of this whole discussion when I asked for more information for myself was is that when we deal with um, DCCs for roads and water and sewer, we only incorporate the town's population. And the question was, why are we including the rural population when we look at DCCs for parks? I still haven't got a good answer in this report to that question. I'm still understanding why a developer building a house in Oliver is paying to build a park for someone that lives in Willowbrook, for example. I don't know why Willowbrook wouldn't be building their own parks and why we are expecting ourselves to build parks for the rural population. I recognize that we share parks and rec with the regional district and that if the parks were being funded from that direction, then that should be through parks and rec, which is a joint service. Basically what I'm saying here is, is that we're being asked to provide a joint service single-handedly, and I'm not sure that we should be doing that. It adds to our cost of development. If we want all of it to grow, we want our cost of development to be lower, not higher. Thank you. I just have a question for clarification, and I read it a couple of times and couldn't figure it out. Is the, um, t uh, how do I word this? Is 49% of the total recoverable cost that we're looking for the 2.7 million, or are we looking to recover 49% of 2.7 million? 49% of 2.7 million? Okay. Could I get an answer on the question? Director? Sure, yeah, I believe the 1.8 um, acres was because of the parks, uh, with the parks uh, master plan that was completed. Um, Alyssa, is that correct? Yeah, um, it was part of the uh, Oliver and Area Parks Master Plan. That number was used in order to quantify how much park, park space would be required. Um, essentially, that, that's the quantifiable um, ODA that we're able to reference in this bylaw. Regardless of that, um, the feedback that we've got from town staff is, is that this park space, based on where development is happening within town, that this park space is development driven within the next 10 years. So, um, Councillor Mattis, I, I hope that addresses a, a bit of your question there, that while that eight acres of park space per thousand um, population does include um, Oliver End area, it's, uh, um, it's a tool in order to quantify 
the amount recoverable. Well, really, if that project is driven by development um, in the next 10 years, it is eligible as a DCC. And ad additionally, um, as projects kind of come to fruition, um, it is recommended, and, and this is something that um, I brought up at our presentation on, on May 11th, was that uh, these DCC bylaws should be amended annually to account for changes in cost estimates, inflation, um, and additional funding that becomes available, um, such as grants or maybe funding from other sources. So, and I don't know if you can speak to that, Randy, but uh, if funding were to become available from another source, there could be an adjustment to um, to this DCC. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not sure. What's that, sir? So again, I, I want to make it clear, I'm not against this park. I see it in the long-term plan for Oliver. I'm just not sure that it should be funded through DCCs. It increases the cost for development of Watson Oliver, and it creates park space that for the population of Oliver, we do not require and will not require for a long, long time. I, I, I think we should put money aside, but not through DCCs for this particular project. Um, we're over park now for the population of the town. It's not our responsibility to provide parks for the regional district. The regional district should be coming to the table with their DCCs to contribute to this project at the same time. Um, that we don't build parks for tourists. Why are we not including 10,000 tourists a year in our parks requirement? They don't live here either. But we don't do that. They use our water supply, they use our sewer supply, but we don't include them. So I, again, I question why and what would happen to this calculation if we deleted the rural population? Or if we went to the regional district and said, it's time you guys stepped up to the plate to develop this Oliver and area master park plan. It's and area, it isn't Oliver's park plan. It's Oliver and district. Council Benjamin. I don't see any other hands, so I'll go again. Um, uh, so I, uh, personally, I feel, I think we've had this conversation before, um, we may be technically over parked, but I think that the bare minimum shouldn't be our goal. I think that more parks is better and that we all benefit from that. Um, I would say that if, if this DCC is um, looking to recover 49% of 2.7 million, then we have another 51% to make up if we're gonna do the full park at some point in the future. Um, and so I would, advise or I guess just like to say and put it out there that we use this DCC um, strictly to reserve money for this park because I think that if I remember correctly from the original conversation this park was the only one identified um, going back however long ago the original DCC was from but the money from the fund has been used for um, all of our linear parks that have been done in recent years and uh, they're all of benefit to the community but for that reason, we have to continue to build up the fund to get it where we need to be. So, um, personally, I don't have any problem with the plan the way that it's presented. Again, based on feedback from developers, um, staff, etc., if our DCCs are not out of line with those in neighboring communities, then I don't see that it um, sort of puts an impediment on us in any way. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Councilor Matt. I don't think our model should ever be, we're no worse than the other guys. We should be better than the other guys. If we can have lower DCCs and be more competitive, it puts the town of Oliver in a better position. And as far as meeting the bare minimum, if you remove almost half the population out of the calculation, um, we almost have twice as many parts as what they, what's required. It's not the bare minimum. We're not meeting any minimums here. We're actually twice what we already require. Question to the director. The DCCs that are that are proposed here that have been updated, uh, what are how do they how are how are they uh, compared to DCCs that are 
what the parks DCCs have been in the past couple of years. Sorry, how do they compare with parks DCCs well, in other communities or no, uh, in in Oliver? In Oliver, what are, what are have what were the parks DCCs before? Like last year, it was twenty nine. We we're showing an updated parks DCC of twenty nine oh nine for single family. What was it? Yeah. Well, what what is it currently? I guess. Yeah, I can get that for you if you give me a second. So up on yeah. the screen there shows the difference between what we what we presented previously and what was presented now, and the difference between the increase in the cost of the park and forty nine percent versus what the, the price of the park was before we did the analysis and at one hundred percent recoverable. So you see that there's a slight decrease now, but in terms of what it was before, I mean, I can quickly look into that unless we. Uh, I'd have to bring up the DCC bylaw quickly and then I can tell you what what it sits at now. Can you just give me a second, Your Worship? Well, so Alyssa, do you have that in any previous slides at all? I um, I don't have it broken down. I just have the total of what the the, the existing DCC is. I don't have it broken down in parts. In front of me at least. So the parks DCCs for a single family dwelling is 2355. Single family, um, actually no, single family one, multifamily one, two, three, 233220. And up there you'll see there's 25, 35. Multifamily one has dropped, multifamily one has dropped $400 based on this proposal. Um, so in the old DCC bylaw, it was all the same. It was for single family one, single family two, multifamily one, multifamily two, multifamily three. It was all 2332. So you'll see that single family one has gone up, two has gone up, multifamily one down, two slightly up, and three up. So yeah, they've all gone up. But as with the comparison we did before, since 2007, there's been about a 40% increase in construction costs. So I don't, we don't have that table that shows that. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't break that down for the parks DCC specifically. At our presentation on May 11th, we did touch on um, how that those 2007 DCCs, the province recommends um, doing a, a minor amendment to DCCs annually to account for um, inflation. Um, Changing construction costs, and as well as any potential um, changes to to the projects um, or uh, funding, such as grant funding, that can be made available, so that annually those numbers would probably increase slightly, so that when we get to the ten year mark um, where we are now, we're not looking at such significant increase um, because the existing DCCs in 2011, if they were adjusted for inflation annually, um, we would actually be looking at decreasing the DCCs right now. Uh, but that was overall, I can't speak to the parts. So 2322, that was the DCC bylaw that was. That's the current bylaw. That's the current bylaw. 20, 2332. Okay. For everything from multi or from single family one all the way down to multifamily three, it was one consistent cost right. per dwelling unit. Thank you. Councilor Matt. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I would just ask the rest of the council if there would be any appetite to defer this until we are able to look at the parks master plan for the regional district and or all over and district let's say um, it's not something that was ever brought forward as part of this discussion and I'm just, there's, there's no rush to put this bylaw into place and I'm wondering if a two-week delay would be an issue for the rest of council for me it would be an issue two weeks this was 2011 that it 
this by the current bylaw was made. So we're getting that information, and I wouldn't mind getting hearing the answer as well why the population in the regional district is being taken into consideration for town of Oliver. Uh, is that a common practice with the with the Suyas, for example? Are they taking into account the regional district there, or Caramias, or Princeton? I just you know, it's, it's a good question, it's a valid question. Um, that, that may lay in that report, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I personally, I, I will also say that I, I don't have a problem with the, the, the increase in DCC Parks DCC costs uh, in consideration that it was 2011, that they, they've last been increased. Um, that's a long time. And some stuff has gone down, some stuff has gone up, but really when you consider the cost of a house, it's gone up in nine years, a $400, I guess it's a little more than that, about a $600 increase in DCCs is pretty negligible on a single family dwelling. But uh, I wouldn't mind just understanding that a little bit more, why we are using a rural population in that calculation. Um, in two weeks, I don't think it's gonna probably change my mind, but I wouldn't mind having that answer. Director. Thank you, Worship. Alyssa, do you know where that, that was derived from besides the fact that it was in the parks and Oliver Parks um, master plan? Was it given the proximity of the park to the REC boundary and the likelihood that residents would use that park from the rural area? Or what do you know where that derived from? Uh, the only information I have on that was from the Oliver and Area Parks Plan. Um, I don't believe any further analysis was done um, to determine that if, how suitable that photo was. Thank you. Councilor Schwarzenberg. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm prepared to go ahead as well because I think, as you say, the nine year, nine year uh, gap between adjusting these and the fact that not only inflation has gone up, but the cost of building has gone up much higher than uh, inflation um, would justify that. But to Councillor Mattis's point, this recommendation says um, that uh, we receive the report and that staff, uh, the council direct staff to prepare the bylaw as amended for first reading at a future meeting. So. If we're, we have to read it again for the first time at a future meeting, if there's any additional information from the Director of Development Services, we can certainly get that before we read it the first time. Thank you. Councilor Grace. Thank you, Your Worship. Yeah, uh, that being said, I mean, I'm always happy to have more information as well. If, if in consultation with local developers, they feel that this this is fair, then I'm, I think I'm fine with the bylaw as it is. Um, so if it is going to come back, like, I would like more information. Hopefully that would, I, I don't know how to word this. I mean, I, I guess we can go ahead and support the recommendation knowing that that information is gonna come back to us. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Say yes. So then I'll move that uh, um, option when the council supports recommendation. I'll second. Correct. Thank you, Worship. I guess I just want a bit more clarify, clar clarification again from Councillor Mattis just as to what he wanted staff to look into the plan specifically you had stated and just where that number derived from. Is that correct? I, I would like to understand the, uh, get a copy of the plan forwarded to us. Certainly how that number was, uh, not how the number was arrived at its basic population, but why are we including the rural population in our calculations when we don't include outside users for any other DCC charges? We don't do it for water, sewer, and roads, and yet they're all used by the same people. Why do we include them with parks? That's kind of the question, one versus the other. I don't still don't understand the difference between using a road and using a park. We, we build them for the same people, but, right? Okay, thank you. And the other part is, could you uh, send us the list of contractors that you uh, developers that you spoke to? Sure, of course. Thank you 
further discussion, questions, Council? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Item four, we're well over actionable economic development strategy. Director. Development services. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Yet again. Thank you, Your Worship. I believe the plan is in front of Council for adoption of the set. This is a plan that you've seen multiple versions of. It hasn't, there was no amendment since it was previously presented to Council. And it, as discussed before, it went to our downtown committee for recommendation and now it's before Council for adoption. Thank you. Thank you. Do we need to change the motion to adopted or received or? Does it matter? For this one, you uh, adopt the action plan. Council Grace. Thank you, Worship. I will move that the Grow Oliver action plan be adopted. No, I had a question. Council Madison. What does adopted mean? Does that mean we're going to adhere to everything in the you're going to put it forward to the best of your abilities. I'll second the motion. Second. I may I make the comment? Yep. I think. Um, I, I mean, we've all had a chance to read it multiple times. I think it's a really good plan. I wonder how. Um, throwing in the little tidbits about COVID and COVID recovery are going to play three to five years from now or further down the road when we're still um, foreseeably using this plan. Uh, there, I do have a couple of little like grammatical things, but I think I can, even though we've adopted it, I can say those on the side hopefully and they'll be sure. taken care of. I think this document's meant to be kind of a living document, is it? Is it not CEO? All documents are living documents for yeah. any organization. They're guiding documents. So it's a guiding document that we will try to follow. It will up, be updated, even maybe when COVID's over. Good point. Good point. Uh, no further comments. I will call the question. Those in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Advisory committee policy. Pass this over to the corporate officer. statement and as well addresses the recommendations 
uh, one, two, and three that council provided on March 9th. Uh, at the April 14th, uh, 2020 meeting, council agreed with the recommendation to consolidate the uh, downtown advisory terms of reference with the global advisory committee and further to add an arts and culture representative to the membership section and that the membership uh, reflect the amendment be reflected in the terms of reference for the downtown advisory. So um, what we've done is created a, a new global policy and uh, created new terms of reference for the airport advisory, the Oliver Downtown Advisory, and the Community Safety and Crime Prevention Committees. So the recommendations before council um, is to, um, that you may adopt the new advisory uh, committee policy in terms of reference. You may refer back to staff for additional changes, or you may consider not adopting the um, policy in terms of reference at this time. Uh, the recommendation before council is to adopt the advisory committee policy in terms of reference and that council rescind the Oliver Airport advisory terms of reference and council rescind the Oliver Downtown Advisory Committee terms of reference and council rescind the Community Safety and Crime Prevention Committee terms of reference. Sorry, I wasn't talking to the microphone. Um, I have it, uh, attached uh, the new policy for council's review and I can take any questions if you have them. Any questions, comments, council? Council Ventimiglia. Thank you. Um, I, I didn't see in there, uh, I know we talked about recommendation, recommendations that were made at earlier meetings, but I didn't see in the policy, or just couldn't find it, the airport advisory committee where it says to stagger the um, membership on, in two year periods. That would be in the global section, I believe, no, under term and of terms and appointments. So it said the terms for the advisory committees is two years unless noted differently in the committee's terms of reference. And did I correct that in the Oliver? I think Kathy pointed that out. So, that, so to clarify then, that's for all the committees? Yes. Uh, okay, I did have one more question. I just have to find it in here. I remember making a note somewhere. Uh, it had to do with the Downtown Advisory Committee. Um, the members. I thought at some point that um, in addition to adding an arts uh, representative that we also um, made two members of council. Um, I see two members, two Town of Oliver members, one staff member with council. The draft one that it reads, the committee shall consist of 10, 11 members, 10, 11 members. And okay. be composed That's of page 12 on your iPad. Two Town of Oliver council members. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I believe um, that Matt, the Deputy Corporate Officer, did receive notification from the Arts Council members that they have appointed members now, so we'll be able to bring some names forward for appointments. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone like to move the recommendation? The motion. motion. Councilor Schwarzenberg? Second. Second, and Councilor Mattis. Any more questions, comments, Council? I see none. I'll call the question. Those in favor? Motion carried. To item six, age friendly assessment action plan. 
Corporate Officer Report Attached. Thank you, Your Worship. This report is for um, information for Council. Um, I just wanted to ensure that you were aware um, that, well, I'm sure you were aware <laughs> that uh, we did make the application for the Age Friendly uh, Communities Grant stream to undertake an Age Friendly Assessment and Action Plan. That um, grant was awarded. We've gone out to RFP, uh, completed an analysis of the seven RFPs received for this project, and um, based on the analysis, um, the plan has been awarded to uh, EcoPlan International. They do provide their um, uh, a flow, flow chart that outlines uh, the start of the project in July, and it needs to be done by April 2021. So this is just for Council's information. Um, there will be hopefully some type of engagement and, and engaging with stakeholders and Council to um, to complete a really robust um, plan for the community. Um, once this is completed and we submit it to UPCM, that will allow community groups to apply for phase two. And those applications, again, will have to come through the town um, because they have to be applied by local government. Thank you. Thank Just you, Court Professor. Your Worship. Would you like to make a comment? I'm wondering if anyone's willing to take a bet that there'll be a recommendation for an age friendly coordinator at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to correspondence, corporate officer. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, on the June 22nd correspondence report, there is one item uh, for Council's action for consideration. There was a, um, a message from Premier Morgan and Minister James uh, outlining building BC's recovery together and to share your ideas. It was a uh, complete uh, document. Uh, they are hoping that um, residents, people in the community, council, to complete their online survey. Uh, they have uh, participation in virtual town halls, and I believe the ask again was for um, communities to um, support uh, advertising in the town halls or social media. media. And as well, they um, are looking for ideas and priorities uh, on how to spend the $1.5 billion uh, the provincial investment in the recovery plan. Uh, so that's one, or you may wish to refer back to staff for additional information, or you may wish to receive a call. CEO. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, with respect to the minister's meeting on Thursday, she did talk to uh, the mayors uh, at that um, meeting with regards to this item and indicated that they'll also be having um, smaller groups, like go going down into smaller areas um, in our valley to have conversations around economic um, enhancements for the area and, and sharing ideas uh, amongst everybody. And she wants to go down to the smaller groups as compared to the ones she's been having as of late. So maybe this 1.5 billion, we might be able to get some seed money for our uh, Development plan leader. <laughs> 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 Council Thank you, Worship. I mean, I'll happily participate. I don't know if we need a motion to do that, or if that's something that we'll, we would just do on our own, or we, do we let them know we want to participate? I think that you can do it on your own. Yes. Thank you, Your Worship. You can do it on your own, but we will be having in invitations as well, like the mayor's meetings that they've been having, they, they will be providing us with invitations too, so you might wanna come and sit in on that with, with the mayor. Let me know when. You wanna just uh, receive the file? Sure, yes, I'll move receive the file. Second. Second. Uh, I will call the question, those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. And the second um, item is your information items. One is a uh, correspondence dated June 
18th from the Assistant Deputy Minister and Director of Police Services, Brenda Butterworth Carr. She is advising the town of Oliver that we are training towards exceeding the $5,000, 5,000 population, sorry, in the 2021 Canada Census. The second piece is uh, from the Liquor Cannabis Regulation Branch with the new policy directive, directive regarding retail stores being enclosed by non-transparent walls. And thirdly, a policy from the school district with regards to technology access and use. use. So the proposed resolution is that the correspondence listed in item I3 and the June 20, and the weekly correspondence be received. I'll make a motion. Move and second. Uh, just a comment that in the correspondence we received um, from, uh, shoot, Brenda Butterworth Carr, the projections are interesting. I don't know how they get their numbers, but they have us at nearly 5,500 for 2021. It'll be interesting to see. 2021, yeah. 50 /50. That's a lot of growth in not a lot of years. It's going to be a 50 50. We probably do a pool and an economic development coordinator. <laughs> that would be a fun community event. By square, so, you can put your number. There you go. Yeah. I will call the question. <laughs> Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Going to move to councillor reports. You might have seen the one on the auxiliary program. Yeah. That's Officer in charge, Brian Evans, is going to get some more information on the auxiliary program. Okay. He's, he's trying to implement an auxiliary program. Yeah, I read it. I thought it looked great. Um, but he's going to get some more information on that, and he will also come and give us a, our Q2 stats at our next meeting. So we'll have some more discussion because I think we have until July 15th to reply to that letter. Okay. So, Councillor Ventimiglia, you're up. So that's me. Uh, Friday, June 12th, I attended virtually, of course, the local government primary care engagement workshop, uh, which was facilitated by the divisions. It was a workshop we were having fairly regularly, regularly, like monthly or something like that. Uh, we haven't had one since the beginning of COVID, so this was first get together in a while. Um, June 17th, uh, I attended a post committee food advisory committee meeting. Um, the group discussed how to, there was some good discussion actually, how to move forward. Um, there was consensus uh, amongst the people there that the continuation of a committee in some form is going to be important. Um, and so the group does plan to meet again later this summer along with our coordinator to look at possible terms of reference for a revised um, future committee. Thursday, June the 18th, I had uh, regional district meetings. The CAO provided us an update on Loose Bay, which I just thought that I would share with everybody this evening. So currently, this was again as of last Thursday, um, they were on average seeing 110 to 120 campers per night. Um, he said roughly 75% of those were agricultural workers, about 10% were yearly Loose Bay campers that come season after season, park at the beginning and stay till the end. Um, and about 15% would be considered to be here as farm workers, but we're not currently employed. So this compared to what we heard a while ago that normally at the beginning of harvest season and right around St. John Baptiste Day, which is this Wednesday, um, they could see up to about 350 people a night for a fair number of nights. Um, compared with the numbers from last week, just tells you how much, how down we are this year. I mean, I think you can see that walking around town even. Um, later that evening, um, I had a SOAC sport meeting, and then today's meetings. Feels like we've been here for a really long time today. <laughs> we all missed each other. <laughs> thank you. Councilor Schwarzenberg. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I um, have had some uh, health issues with a member of my family that I've been dealing with, so I can say that I attended today's meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Schwarzenberger. I hope everything is going well. It is. Thank you for asking. Councillor Grace. Uh, thank you, Worship. 
Uh, June 11th, I virtually attended the Downtown Advisory Committee meeting, which we had discussed today, um, and also the on June 11th, the final BC Economic Development Association Economic Response and Recovery Call, they had presentations by various regional economic development officers. June 12th, um, also attended the primary care engagement workshop, and they had a bit of a focus on their COVID-19 response. Um, we were asked to share the message that if you need a doctor to please see your own primary care physician or nurse practitioner, um, if you have one, rather than going to a clinic because they have concerns around the long-term effects um, or impact of episodic care. Uh, June 15th, I uh, attended in person, ver uh, socially distance, a uh, Oliver Parks Recreation Meeting. Good news is the pool has opened today. They've made changes to the schedule. They did the best they could in the situation that they're in. So they're gonna have sort of different categories of swims, a modified schedule to try to get everyone in there. Um, I've got my own kids signed up for swimming lessons, so we're looking forward to that. June 17th, uh, as Councillor Ventimilla uh, also attended the Food Action Advisory Committee wrap up, revamp, whatever you wanna call it. Um, also want to say the edible pathway planters look great and uh, they've got lots of harvest hut volunteers this year so that's all good news. Uh, today, this morning, along with Mayor Johansson, we had the community safety and crime prevention meeting. So we discussed the implementation of a community situation table as well as uh, forthcoming additional funding for victim services. We had a report from Bylaw who we were focusing on unsightly property complaints and a park presence. Also, we're looking for an additional uh, community member to join the committee, so if you're interested, please send an email to the town and today's meetings, and that is the end of my report. Thank you, Councillor Grace. Councillor Mattis. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, June 18th was the uh, Port Advisory Committee meeting and today's meetings. Thank you, Councilor Mattis. Uh, June 10th, uh, I attended a Heritage Committee meeting virtually. Still Zoom meetings there, as like everywhere. On June 12th, I was at the Phantom Creek opening ceremony, uh, a much smaller ceremony than I imagined that they would like to have had. Uh, I can't imagine there were even 50 people there uh, for the facility that size. There was, it felt like there was nobody there, but keeping in line with uh, COVID and keeping the number under 50, that's what it was. Um, and I also phoned into a primary care engagement workshop on June the 12th later that afternoon. June 20th, I was on Citizens on Patrol, and as Council Grace mentioned, uh, Community Safety and Crime Prevention Committee meeting uh, this morning. Our next uh, regular meeting is on July 13th, 2020, regular open council meeting. Acting mayor schedule for June, July, and August is Councillor Grice. I don't think we have any public for questions, so I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Ventimina, Councillor Zimberger, all in favor? We are adjourned from our regular meeting. We have one more to go. We're a little bit rusty.